Hello again. It is, oh, let's see, April, April 2nd, and I'm running behind schedule, but things are going really well. So I've, I'm having a good feeling about um, Rails UI and how it's coming along. There are two themes I have completed at this point. The, the last update, I think I was still working on one of them. Um, there are little edge cases and stuff to still store it out, but I, I really am on the, the you know forefront of getting this in your hands. So I wanted to do a quick video just showing you where things are at, uh, what you can expect, I guess. Um, I didn't, this is like unscripted, so I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about, but um, the idea is it's progressed a little bit and it is where I'm you know, at a point to just share it and get some feedback and see if it's really something that you're all gonna maybe make use of. Um, the overall, the feedback so far has been really, really freaking positive, which is great to see. Um, that list that I have on my, uh, that or screen there, the sign up form has great generated over just over a thousand um, subscriptions at this time. So that's that's more than my course. If you know me, I did a course in the past. I think that one had about 700 at the time before launch. So this seems to have even more, you know, prominence, but we'll see. Um, it's still got to prove itself and all that jazz. So let's get to it. Um, Basically, I want to just walk you through the installation process of, say, a bootstrap theme. Um, this is the first theme I've literally broke ground on. So there's some still some stuff to sort out. But uh, bootstrap actually released a, an alpha version of 5.3 not long ago. Um, it's the second iteration of that alpha. Um, so Rails UI is going to be alpha when I release it. So. My goal is to, to make it free during that time. I don't really need to, to benefit from it, but I might offer like a plan or something so that y'all can support uh, the ongoing effort. I'm working on this on the side. I don't have the time to just delegate or I don't have the money to work on this full time yet. So it's something I'm, I'm doing when I can. And unfortunately that means it's going slower than I'd hope, but um, I'd rather ship something with higher quality than, you know, just get something crappy out the door, which I think with a design based product, you kind of have to do. So uh, let's make a new app. I have a little script I have prepared for this moment and um, essentially creating a brand new Rails app, CDing into that app, bundling and adding Rails UI. It's a local gem at this point in my system. I might just ship it as that as the beta. Um, I've found just the, the, in a side, uh, unless you want to pay crazy fees or, you know, integrate with some crazy APIs, uh, distrib distribution of a private gem is kind of nuts as far as being able to do it privately. Um, so there are pros and cons to doing open source work, I should say. And uh, if you do open source work, it's super easy to get it out there. But if you want it to be private, maybe close to a group or some friends or something, Either you need to spin up your own gem server or something, or you know, construct the wheel again. So, um, yeah, let's. I'll I'll figure that out. But so far, it's been kind of crappy to figure out a solution that I really like. Um, but yeah, more to, more on that to come. Um, so after it installs the gem, we're doing the Rails UI installer. So that's all in one little command here, and I'm saving um, you the keystrokes because it will just take forever if I don't. But what I'm doing when I install Rails UI, which will be in the documentation, is um, tweaking the default stack and adding stuff that you um, would probably only want to use anyway, but also kind of stuff that I feel like is a little opinionated from our end or my end. I say R and we in our stuff, but it's just me. And um, where was I going there? Yeah, so when you run the installer, uh, you know, Rails comes with import maps by default. And I honestly can't stand those personally. So um, maybe it's the newest thing, and that's great. But ES build is where it's at for me. So we essentially take all that stuff they added as far as import maps go and bring in ES build, bring in CSS bundling, those two gems that are part of Rails. Well, they're not part of Rails, but they're addition to Rails and tweak stuff around those so it's easier to work with and just you know kind of drop in ready so that's the whole point with this uh, uh, solution here so here you see the installer running i'm inserting stuff into views i'm copying views over relative to your theme uh, there's assets all that stuff that's coming you know with these themes and each one is going to be theme based and then ultimately we'll have um 
somewhat shared components between the whole ecosystem, but also more granular detailed stuff that's just for that theme. So that's on me to figure out. And it is kind of tedious to do, but I think it's su super cool to see that you can kind of automate it with something like this and, and you know, pick and choose what you want to work with. So in this case, this one is bootstrap. So we're going to do a bin dev and run that localhost server. Uh, so I'll, have, I'll boot that up and you can see it on the screen. And it's just a, a basic Rails app, but I'm mounting an engine to this thing. So behind the scenes, there's going to be some cool stuff that comes with the gem. And I've redesigned the start page. So this is one of the bigger updates. Uh, recently, it, it made me laugh recently, the Rails team, no, nothing against them, but they've released a shadow, a box shadow to the default Rails um, start page that's supposed to in, in, indicate that that's clickable and you could go to rubyonrails.org and that was I just like face and face palm um, so I feel like th there's so much more action that can be taken at, at the start screen so this is kind of my solution to that unfortunately it has to come after you install rails UI but it's not a big deal to me that you know I have to tweak that part like they probably wouldn't even accept a pull request I don't think they did I think uh, someone submitted a pull request to change that start page, but they wouldn't allow it. So it's kind of like, eh, okay. So I took matters in my own hands, added this start page. Uh, so you can go to the guides, the API forum. Um, and then I just recently added an updated routes uh, UI. So on this page, it kind of changes its its look and feel each time you re refresh. But I kind of just made you know this stuff more user-friendly. So it's not perfect, but... Um, there's less less uh, junk to sift through. It's easier to find stuff. Text is actually legible, so <laughs> that was the main thing. Uh, the the like error page and stuff you see in Rails where it's um, the red. You know, you see the the routes below that. It's useful um, or Rails info routes dot yeah the the URL. It's useful, but man, it's hard to read. And I'm just like, why why not solve that problem? Um, so this was kind of that little bit of approach. There is a little, um, you know, toggle for the other types of HTTP requests. So you don't have to see everything when you're searching through it. Instead, you can just kind of go through to the main thing, find the other uh, route that you're looking for, and then you'll have it in your arsenal to use. So little nice addition there, I thought. And um, mailers, I might do something similar right now. There's nothing, so, but... I do have a link to it, so that's great. So installing your app, we've done the Rails installer. Um, at this point, I've got a new little uh, configuration screen when you go through this step. You can you can throw in your application name and a support email. I mainly link to these in like mailers and branding or throughout your app. You don't have to use it, but you would have to go back manually and um, edit those in your views if you want to. It's not a big deal to do. Um, so in this screen, the big choice is to choose Bootstrap or Tailwind. I'm going to do Bootstrap right now. Um, my original goal was to have four themes ready for this launch, but that's a tall order. So um, went with one Bootstrap and one Tailwind. So coming along, uh, they, they look great to me, and you could preview them, preview them in real time. I host these on Cloudflare's Pages stack. So it's not actually part of Rails UI or anything, which I might maybe do someday where it's a Rails UI domain. But you can see real time just kind of what I base this all on. So I, what I do is essentially build a design system using actual design software that's you know comprised of like buttons, components, stuff like that, the reusable things. And then I'll create an actual realistic page that you might have on your website or something of that nature. Maybe it's on your app, depending on if you have your web and app um, or your website and your app conjoined. If not, it's not a huge deal, but uh, the whole idea is to have like say a pricing page and just some sort of marketing page to start with. And I'll eventually add those. There goes my camera for some reason. Cameras, audio, audio, don't like it. All right, so I wanted to talk about the pages in Rails UI. So after you install a theme, which I'll do right now, when I hit save changes, you'll get this loading page. But if you look at your logs, you'll see a lot of stuff going on, which is the beauty of it. Um, we're essentially 
I'm pulling some stuff out of the CSS bundling gem for some of these. Like Tailwind needs to be hijacked hardcore. Uh, Bootstrap isn't as much, so it's not a bit, as big a deal, but there's things that happen when you install the, the theme that uh, will go and fetch assets. We'll also copy over some stuff related to that specific theme as opposed to just like, here's what all the bootstrap themes will look like. So that's unique to this project and something I'm trying to like hone in on. So it's nothing that like you can just go grab off a shelf somewhere is kind of the goal. Um, so with the theme installed, what I wanted to really mention is how to add pages. So pages are going to be an ever growing thing for each theme um, to a point, of course. But the idea is to add admin stuff or change log pages, all those kind of unique pages you might need in a SaaS app or something that you might use Rails for in particular. Um, I can't predict what you'll, what you'll need, but there are ways, maybe I'll get feedback from you all about what pages really make the most sense. So I'm thinking like the next one might be a admin admin related one and um so stuff like that will be added as time comes of course time is not of the essence for me so i'm just adding a couple to start now but you can pick and choose which pages to order or to add um dynamically so up to you what you want to do at any bit a moment when it gets added it'll generate a page for you and it'll actually ship into the app so you can go check it out in your app as opposed to like off on Cloudflare or something like I mentioned before. So uh, when that's completed, it'll come back and you'll be able to see that page. All right, so if you want to view it, you can go hit view page and I did a little too early. I need to restart the app and it does it dynamically. But if you were to go to this page, should boot up here. There we go. Now we got an about page. It's right in view. Um, your sign-in page, all that stuff's already set up since you choose, chose that theme, so that specific theme, and those things are just ready to rock and roll. Uh, your mailers are good to go as far as basic templates. Um, and the design system's here as well. So you've got all this in your arsenal post-install. Uh, so it's just a, a great reference to always have in your app. And I don't know if you recall, but there's um, like navigation, all those kinds of things are just built in. Looks like something's broken here though. I'll fix that. But yeah, all that's taken care of. And then when you go back into your app, say you want to go to your Rails UI install, you can view that page. There's a little launcher I've added down here that allows you to go to those things on the fly. That's only present on your def you know development environment in your design environment so don't worry about that being your production app unless you want it to i guess we could you could add that it's it's based on the layout that you're serving so you can dictate that entirely but all this stuff comes with rails ui at this point um, i'm writing documentation now and then trying to figure out a way to share it so i can have um, eventual closed access but right now open access so it's kind of complicated but i think in the beginning, it'll be just kind of like open source to start with, and then I'll improve it um, privately and eventually share it for um, a subscription model of some sort, maybe, so I can keep working on it and committing more pages and, and themes and stuff. The end goal is here is to offer tons of themes and just support for additional pages, uh, extend these design systems to be even more verbose. So we've got a lot here. Uh, you, as you know, Bootstrap's huge, so you could do a lot with it. Um, but there's a lot. I don't know what's going on with some of this. Might be my uh, local environment right now. But uh, yeah, Bootstrap has its thing. Tailwind's massive as far as you want to take it. So it's, there's a lot that you can do with it. But overall, it's pretty simple install, pretty simple uh, generation run to run. A few, a few key commands, um, some some point and clicks and then you're ready to roll and then you have an app that you can take some design patterns and, and roll with. So i um, super excited to get it out there. Just wanted to share a quick update. I know I'm behind schedule, but I promise soon it will be in your hands. You can play around with it and then we can all figure out the best path forward for it. So I'm excited to do that and uh, look forward to chatting with some of you. If you want to reach out and let me know any feedback, um, go to Rails UI underscore that is my twitter now for this 
Um, got a lot of attention for some recent posts that I publish. I'll often, I've got the kids during the day and stuff like that when I'm working full time. So I'll be getting up at like four in the morning, my time and, um, work on this. And that's, I'll often tweet really early for some reason. So if you see it then that's why. Um, but that is kind of how I'm keeping up with the, the Joneses kind of keeping some, some status updates going. So hopefully it's useful. Hopefully you're excited about it and I hope this can make a difference. So I hope you find some value. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.